Hi, I'm Courtney Nash. I'm an editor with O'Reilly, and I'm here today with David Wolver, who is a professor at the University of San Francisco in computer science. That's right. And you've also been doing some work with Google on App Inventor, I understand? Yeah, writing tutorials, that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, today we're going to be building some pretty complicated apps. Uh, we're going to be talking to a lot of data online, so we're going to build an app that gets uh, book information from Amazon, Yes. Uh, an app that gets RSS feeds, and we're going to build our own API, from what I hear. We're going to do that. Yeah. So that, to me, sounds pretty intimidating. I'm not a developer. I, I, can, I can read certain programming languages. I can understand what people are talking about, but I've never written a lot of code. So I, am I in over my head here? Well, you know, App Inventor is designed for um, people that aren't necessarily programmers. And in fact, to, to connect to the web, they, they have a component called the Tiny Web DB component. Mm -hmm. And it kind of provides a bridge, right? So, so programmers can write APIs that work with App Inventor. Tiny Web DB can talk to those. And then App Inventor programmers can talk to Tiny Web DB. Okay, all right. So that's a little more reassuring. But I mean, you said you said programmers can build APIs. That's right. And we've established I'm not a programmer, but. By the end of this segment, we're going to build an API. We, we so are, we, I'm not sure I believe you yet. <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah, so definitely um, that's on the far end of what people can do. But they, people can build these uh, programs, these APIs that talk to App Inventor, and all they are is kind of wrappers of other APIs. And we're going to use Google's App Engine, which okay. makes things real easy. All right. You can put stuff up on the web pretty easy. And I'm going to show you a template. And you can use that template and kind of fit the Python code you're going to write, and you'll know exactly the context where it should fit. All right, so a template we can get started from? That's right, and you can use some samples you find and, and just kind of tweak those samples and kind of get connected to the web. I like it. Let's get started. Good. So we're going to get some data, and to display it in our UI, we're going to add some text around that. That's correct. So we'll use this to. Well, to what, build what our we're going to what we're going to use this actually is to is to build our what we want to send to Amazon. Ah, okay. So we want to send ISBN colon, and then really the result we got back from the scanner. That makes sense. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to grab a text block, and this is just kind of a fixed text. And I'm going to put the ISBN colon here. So this is the syntax that we know we need to use. Yeah, and the same one we used when we were looking at the web interface to, yeah. to it. Okay. And then I'm going to grab, uh, actually what we need is, now we need the, the actual ISBN number. Yeah. Okay, and, and I kind of want to drag this down. That's kind of intuitive, but that's mm -hmm. not what you do. Yeah, it, it, it seems like I should be able to just take it out of there. Yeah, so this is really kind of the name of the parameter. Right. And once you've brought, brought this event in, you can go get the value mm -hmm. in my definitions. All right, so it's a reference to it. You've got to go get that reference Good. and plug Good. it in. That's okay. right. So I'm going to grab that, and there you go. So really what we're doing right now is we're, we're talking to my Amazon API. Yeah. We're saying, give me a value with the tag ISBN, and then whatever the ISBN That's number was I scanned. Is. Okay. Okay. Now with TinyWebDB, you call get value, you don't get instant gratification. That doesn't sound fair. It's too bad. You gotta wait. And and the problem, what what it is, is two entities talking to each other. It's uh -huh. asynchronous. Okay. So things work where you kind of make the request. Yeah. And then a little bit later, you know, a few microseconds, right? Yeah. Uh, the data comes back. All right. So I put my order in, and my eggs don't show up immediately. I gotta wait a little bit. That's right. That's All right. right. Good. I can, so I can handle that. The, the nice thing is there's an event called got value. And in this event, the data is returned. Okay. So we made our request. Amazon sent the data back to us, or actually my API called Amazon, mm -hmm. sent it back to my API, and it sent it back to, to us. Okay. Now we're ready to use it. All right. So we need to know some way for to say that the data is here. Correct. Okay. Correct. So the data is here. And the data is going to be in this value from WebDB. All right. Okay. And really, the, what gets returned in the data yeah. is a list of books. Okay. Okay. In this case, that list is one single book. Because we've only sent one ISBN. That's correct. Okay. And that book itself is actually a list of three items. Okay. So you can return a whole list. Correct. Or lists of lists and some you know fairly complicated things. Okay. <laughs> okay. But in in our case, that that first item is a book, and it's got the title, the price, and the ISBN number comes back with it as well. All right. Okay, so, so really we know this guy's a list, 
And what we're going to do is we're going to um, define a new variable. And I'm going to call that variable item. So we can make our own variable. We can make our own variable. So this is like a component property, but it has nothing to do with any particular component. Okay. Okay. And so item is going to be a text object. And it doesn't really matter what I put it in as the init value. So I can put all kinds of things in that variable. Right? Absolutely. Okay. And then once I define item, I can go over here and, and get this set block. There it is. Okay. So I want to change the item. And what I'm going to change the item to is the first item in this list called value from WebDB. All right. So remember, value from WebDB is a list with three one things. item. It's actually a list, and the first item is a list of three things. <laughs> okay. Because okay. we could return a whole list of books. Right. Okay. So this right. item is going to be a single book. So I could even call this um, a book item. All right. Okay. And I'm going to set book item to the first element in my list. And you know that you're getting a list back because you've set the API is set up that way. So once you played around in there, you could see that you're getting a list back. So that's correct. It seems to me that even though this is this is so straightforward in that I can you know I can drag the blocks around, I can see what's going on. There's levels of abstraction in here. And, and I need to know what some of the underlying logic is in order to, to decide what I need to do next. Good. Yeah, a lot of App Inventor programming, you know, you're not.